We want to welcome you to Haynes Ministries. This is a Word and Due Season Bible Study, and I'm Steve Haynes. I'm Susan Haynes. This is my lovely wife. And tonight we're going over Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. I'm going to dedicate this whole Bible study tonight for that one verse. Of course, we're going to have many verses to go with it. Uh, but uh, just to give you a few announcements before we start, and then I'm going to have my wife pray. Uh, we're going to have, we have communion on the first Thursday night of each month. And, uh, and uh, you know, our Bible studies are every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And, and, uh, and our uh, next communion is going to be on November 3rd. So you want to, you want to join us for that. And then uh, we have prayer meetings uh, the first and third Tuesday night of each month and th they start at 7 p.m. Central Time. So send us your prayer requests and we will pray for them. Send us your prayer requests and our next prayer meeting will be on Tuesday, November 1st at 7 p.m. You can just send a prayer request in. Uh, you can go to our website at hangsministries.org. You know, contact information should be right there. And uh, I think before I start with the Bible study, I'd like to ask my wife to just open up with prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your many blessings in our lives. And thank you for the great privilege of, of having your Holy Spirit and having your word that we can learn of you and, and get to know you better and know what your plans and purposes for our lives are. God, we pray that you would anoint this service to your glory and bless all of our listening audience, Lord, that they would receive from you, that their lives would be changed forever, and that they would be prepared for the rapture of the church and the coming of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> well, we're going to, we've been going over the book of Revelation. We've done chapters 1, 2, and 3. And uh, so tonight, we're beginning Revelation chapter 4, but I, I think for tonight, I'm just going to uh, use Revelation 4.1 as, as a whole thing. And then next next Thursday, next time, we'll, we'll finish, I'm sure we'll finish Revelation chapter 4. But reading from the New International Version, Revelation 4.1 says, After this, I looked. And there before me was a door standing open in heaven, and the voice I heard, or the, the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. Now, how many, how many knows that we're living in the last days? I, I know we are. Uh, we call it the last days, but I believe we're in the last seconds of the last hours of the last days. Amen. Uh, Jesus' return is, is very, very soon. It's just, just evident. Uh, the signs of the time are so evident that points to his coming. And I just want to ask, are you ready to go? Uh, I hope that you'll watch this whole Bible study because at the end of it, my wife's going to offer you a salvation prayer, and you can come to know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And those of you that are, are Christians, and maybe you're not focusing entirely the way you should, our, in last week's study, we were uh, studying chapter 3, and and the Lord admonished us to wake up, Yeah. To to be alert. And, you know, we should always be seeking God for his will in our lives and be watching for his appearing amen but are you ready to go my wife and i we're we're ready to go yes you know don't be like so many that are going to be left behind there's going to be a lot of a lot of people that consider themselves christians left behind you know and uh, but if you are left behind i'm praying you can get some insight from what i'm about to share what we're about to share we believe uh, the seven-year tribulation will be after the rapture of the church. Uh, the seven-year tribulation is also known as Daniel's 70th week, and it's also been called uh, 
the time of Jacob's trouble. Now, if you remember your Old Testament, you know, there was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and God changed Jacob's name to Israel. So the Most High God is the God of Israel. Amen. Amen. Uh, but anyway, I, I like to call it the 70th week of Daniel. Uh, how many knows that the church wasn't found anywhere in the first 69 weeks of Daniel? And the church is not going to be found in the 70th week of Daniel. Uh, now there will be people saved during that time. They'll be known as tribulation saints. Uh, but before I go any further, I want to take a look at the great book of Matthew in uh, chapter 24. In Matthew 24 from the New International Version, verses 1 through 3, it says, Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to its buildings. Do you see all these things, he asked? I tell you the truth, not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us. They said, when will this happen and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? You know, that's, that's a question so many people are asking today. But when Jesus made these statements, it left the disciples with questions. How many of us have ever questioned God? I have so many times, you know. <laughs> but his disciples were wondering, when will this happen and what will be the sign of his coming and what will the sign of the end of the age be? Let's go on with verse 4 through 9. It says in verse 4, Jesus answered, hallelujah. <laughs> he said, watch out that no one deceives you for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Christ, and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, be, uh, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. You know, uh, Jesus said, everything that's going on in the world today, for one thing, it's not taking God by surprise, okay? But everything that's going on in the world today it, it, he said these things must be before the coming of the Son of Man. And then in verse 7, it says, uh, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Now, how many knows, how many, how many of your mothers and fathers, well, Susie, Susie's a mother and I'm a father and we had a couple sons and let me tell you when those birth pains hit they began to increase in uh, uh, begin intensity. to get intensity and rapidity they begin to get more intense and more rapid well that's exactly what's going on in the world today all these famines and earthquakes and wars and and all this stuff is just uh, devastation around the world hurricanes it's just all coming together. But he said these are all the beginning of birth pains. And then in verse 9, it says, Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. I like uh, how Jesus, what Jesus says in verse 4, or what the scripture says in verse 4, it says, Jesus answered, Glory to God. Even when we question God, he will always find a way to answer us. Amen. Mm-hmm. Whether it be through that leading in your heart, or but you know, or or the written word, or, or just or whatever, God will find a way. Voice. Still small voice, He'll find a way. But He goes on to say, "Don't let anyone deceive you." <clears throat> now, how many of us knows that the devil, our enemy, loves to use deception on everybody, but especially God's people? Uh, for instance, there are many religions in the world today. The devil will try to deceive God's people into thinking that there are other ways to reach God. No, that is not true. Yeah. And uh, we're talking about the end times. That's why I'm going over some of this stuff. So let's look in the fourth chapter of the book of Acts and the 12th verse. And it says, 
Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must <clears throat> be saved. Amen? Now, you, these other people are saying there's other ways to heaven, other ways to heaven. No, there's only one way, and that's through Jesus. There's only one way to heaven, and that is through Christ. I'm admonishing you, do not be deceived into thinking these other religions are going to get you to heaven. Amen? They're not. Uh, but as we go through these verses of Scripture, I want you to remember one thing, that the church had not been born yet. Okay? Uh, we, we, in the gospel. In the, yeah, the, in the go four gospels. Yeah, the four gospels, the church hadn't been born yet. Uh, in fact, the church was still a mystery. How many knows that Jesus wasn't walking around the earth back in his day with a new, with a little New Testament tucked under his arm? It hadn't been written yet. In fact, uh, the Lord's Bible was known as the Law and the Prophets. How many's ever heard of the Law and the Prophets? Well, <clears throat> that that was what the Old Testament was referred to, and. Uh, but before I go any further, I want to take a, a few look at some verses concerning the mystery of the church. And in Romans 16, 25 through 26, it says, Now to him who is able to establish you by my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now... Uh, revealed and made known, made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God so that all nations might believe and obey Him. Some more scriptures on the mystery of the church in Ephesians 3, 2 through 6. It says, Surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. That is, the mystery made known to me by revelation as I have already written briefly. In reading this, then you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to men in other generations as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel of the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise in Christ Jesus. Now we could we could really uh, go on and on about the mystery of the church, but I just w want to remark that God chose to keep the church a mystery until it was time for it to be revealed. You know, how many knows God has a plan? How many knows that God's ways are above our ways and His thoughts are above our thoughts? Amen. Uh, he chose to keep the church a mystery until it was time to be revealed. If, uh, <clears throat> if Satan would have known God's plan, he never would have crucified the King of Glory. How many knows that? Amen. In fact, let's look at 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 10. It says, We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. No, we speak of God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed it to his by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. Amen. The mystery has been revealed to us now, brothers and sisters, by the mighty Spirit of God. And we're sharing this mystery tonight. We're sharing this mystery tonight. Now, relating back to Revelation 4.1, I, well, here, let me just read it one more. It says, uh, After this I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven, and the voice I had 
first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. Now, my wife and I believe that this is where the rapture of the church happens. And uh, now, don't don't touch that mouse yet. Just give me a chance to to say a few things, okay? Uh, and I know what a lot of you are thinking. You're thinking, well, the word rapture isn't even in the Bible. Well, it's in the Latin Bible. <laughs> and besides that, there's a lot of things in the Bible that aren't that people say that aren't in the Bible. One thing is. God will help those that help themselves. That's not even in the Bible. The word Bible is not even in the Bible. So, or, or the terms, the second advent's not even in the Bible, but people use those terms so people will understand what is being referred to, amen? So, anyway, uh, the word rapture is in the Latin Bible. The Latin word is rapturo. It just simply means caught up caught up. You might wonder why a word would be taken from Latin. Well, you have to remember that during the times of Jesus, Latin and Greek were the dominant languages of the time. Of course, the Jewish people spoke Hebrew as well. And if you'll remember that when Jesus hung on the cross, that Pilate had a sign made up proclaiming him king of the Jews in three different languages, which were Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Let's just look at it. John 19, verses 19 through 20, says, Now Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Then many of the Jews read this title, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. So it's like this. In time, the church picked up this word called the rapture to be referring to the catching away uh, or the catching up of the church. I just want to say, brothers and sisters, the time of the rapture is at hand. Uh, Jesus is coming for his bride, and it could be just any second, you know. Uh, the church is his bride, and he's coming for one that is ready to meet him in the air. Uh, and I just want to explain that the rapture and the second coming are two different events the rapture, like I said, could occur at any second, whereas the second coming will be at the end of what the world will know as the tribulation period. When the rapture occurs, that is when the church will be caught up to literally meet the Lord in the air, and at the second coming, Jesus will literally set foot on earth upon the Mount of Olives. Let's just take a look at some scriptures. Now, now don't touch that mouse yet. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, it says, Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. You know, in these verses of Scripture, the Lord is just very simply telling us that we're going to meet Him in the air. Uh, now, there are some different views on when the rapture will take place. I believe that, my wife and I believe that the rapture will occur before the seven year tribulation begins. Then there are some who believe the rapture will be in the middle of the tribulation. Then some believe the rapture will be at the end of the seven year tribulation. And then there are those who don't 
think there's even going to be any kind of a rapture, but only the second coming of the Lord. I want to go to 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 11, and let's just look at those for a moment. It says, Now, brothers, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains. There's that term, labor yeah, pains again. Yeah. On a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you. Like a thief, you are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be alert and self-controlled. I think uh, I just want to make a comment that uh, we're not in the darkness. We're, we're sons of the light and sons of the day. Uh, we, we, we don't need to be taken off guard when this rapture happens. You know, I know no man knows the day or the hour, but we can know the season. Those that are looking for the Lord, amen. So we can be on our guard. We can be watching, amen. And some people might say, well, yeah, but, you know, they've been saying that for years and it hadn't happened. Well, during the days of Noah, God told Noah to build an ark, but it was 100 years later yeah, uh, before the flood came. And he was preaching all those years, and some of those people were saying the same thing up until the day the rains came. So we need to be prepared at all times. We need to be found doing what God wants us to do, and that's one of the ways we're prepared. Uh, we need to accept Jesus in our heart. We need to stay close to him, stay in the word, stay in prayer, and obey him. Amen. You know, we live in a world of uh, fast food, fast pace, fast fit, microwave. ATM machines. ATM machines, <laughs> you know, a land of entitlement. Everybody thinks everybody owes them something. <laughs> but <laughs> I know years ago one time uh, uh, I had the, I was driving my grandma around and I was running some errands and and I was trying to explain to her what an ATM machine was, and she looked at me, and she goes, everybody's always in a hurry. Get this fast. Get that fast. You're not going to get to heaven that way. That's what she Amen. told me. She said, they, people can't get to heaven that way by taking shortcuts. <laughs> but like Susie said, people have been saying, yeah, where's this rapture? Where's this rapture? Why hadn't it happened yet? You know, there's scoffers. There's ba 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 <laughs> I've heard of, heard about it all my life, uh, you know. Uh, but that's why we're supposed to be ready all the time. They were, uh, in this day and age, uh, when the Bible was being written, they were looking for the coming of the Lord, and we're still looking for it, yeah. you know. I mean, it's okay to look for years and years and be prepared for His coming. Amen. Uh, we, we need to, and what a joy, I mean, this isn't a hard thing to to accept Jesus in your heart and start living for Him. That isn't a hard thing. The hard thing is is when you're not living for God. Yeah, that's the hard thing. Amen. But in verse seven, uh, First Thessalonians five says, "For those who sleep sleep at night, and those who get drunk get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be self controlled." putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Amen. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. Now these verses of scripture or some more of my bases of a pre-tribulation rapture. First of all, in verse 9, God has said that he has not appointed us to suffer wrath. You know, and also so many people uh, are saying that the church 
has to go through half of the tribulation and still other people are saying that the church has to go through the entire tribulation you know i heard one brother in the lord say bless god we're going through it well i'll tell you what just knock yourself out with it me and my wife we're going up to heaven when when the when the rapture happens uh but well what what people don't understand when it's talking about wrath there that's that's talking about god's judgment on the earth and and we've been saved through god's grace if we've accepted jesus as our lord and savior and we don't have to suffer wrath amen because of that i'm not talking about going through tribulation trials, trials, tribulations, trials you know trials you know and things like that that's not what we're talking about because christians, we're talking about tribulation such as the world has never known right right because um christians do go through persecution and, and some trials you know, mm. so, but that's not what we're talking about. The great tribulation is when God puts his judgment on the earth and, and he judges the earth for rejecting him. You know, first of all, I just want to remind everybody that the church is the bride of Christ. And I've said this before and I want to say it again. Um... And the bride of Christ is going to get to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, I don't think for one minute that God is going to force his bride to go through that kind of tribulation and have her beat up and then take her out to supper. <laughs> I don't think, not on my watch, he's not. Amen. Uh, you know, and another thing, for those of you who think the church will have to suffer any or all of the tribulation, it's like this, since the last 2,000 years, much of the church is already in heaven. You say, bless God, the church has to go through the tribulation. Bless God. Most of the church is already in heaven. I mean, are you telling me that for a very small percentage of the church that is still on the earth, that the church has to suffer these things? I think not. Uh, you know, Another thing, God hasn't called the church to do penance, which simply means voluntary self-punishment inflicted as an outward expression of repentance for having done wrong. No, we are not saved by works, but we are saved by grace. In Ephesians 2, 7 through 9, it says, in order that in the coming ages he might show the uh, incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus, for it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not by works, so that no one can boast. Amen. Um, here, let me, uh, let me read from uh, Revelation 3, 10 through 13. We, we went over this last week, but I just want to repeat some of it. It says, since you have kept my command to endure patiently, how many knows the Lord Jesus says, those that love me will keep my commands. Yes. Those Amen. that are awaiting for his blessed appearing. Uh, it says, I will also keep you from the hour that is going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. Him who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will he leave it. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will also write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. You know, Jesus is telling his church that he will keep them from the hour of trial that is going to come up upon the whole world. He did not say he would keep the church through the hour that's coming upon the whole world. Friends, I'm going up. Susie's going up. Amen. We're going to be raptured out of here. Uh, but before I start making remarks about the mid-tribulation view, let me tell you about 
the two witnesses who will appear after the rapture. Many think that these two witnesses will be Elijah and Enoch, and then some believe that the two witnesses are Elijah and Moses. My personal belief is that the two witnesses will be Elijah and Moses, just very simply because of the works that will be demonstrated through them. And we'll just go there, Revelation 11, 2 through 6. It says, But exclude the outer court. Do not measure it, because it has been given to the Gentiles. They will trample on the holy city for 42 months. And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1260 days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. If anyone tries to harm them, fire comes from their mouths and devours their enemies. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. These men have power to shut up the sky so that it will not rain during the time they are prophesying, and they have power to turn the waters into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they want. Now, if you remember your Old Testament, you'll remember that Elijah shut up the heavens from raining for three and a half years. And if you'll also remember, Moses turned the water into blood, the Nile into blood. Uh, he also, all those plagues come forth over Egypt. Uh, you know, and those are some of the same signs these two witnesses will be performing during the first half of the tribulation period. And if you'll remember, who was it that stood on the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus? Yes, it was Moses and Elijah. Moses and Elijah. You find that in Matthew 17, 1 through 3. It says, After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then, there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Now, for those who think the other witness is Enoch, I, I believe that Enoch was a type and shadow of the rapture. And we can find it in Genesis 5:24. It says, Enoch walked with God, then he was no more because God took him away. Amen. God did not take Enoch at the end of the flood, nor did God take Enoch in the middle of the flood. It was that God took Enoch before the flood or before any tribulation. Before so, judgment. Before any judgment. So, you know, I believe uh, these two witnesses are going to be Elijah and Moses. Now, while these two witnesses are doing their signs and wonders, uh, God is going to save 144,000 Jews to evangelize the world. Uh, in Revelation 7, 1 through 4, it says, After this I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or any tree. <clears throat> then I saw another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of the living God. He called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea, do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. Then I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. Now I know one religion, you know, they put their basis on this 144,000, but... Getting saved. But getting saved, but no, no, but no. The 144,000 are Jews because yeah. it goes on to say... Of, of each tribe. It names yeah. the tribes and 12,000 each of them, I think. Just about all of them is yeah. 12,000 each. You know, I believe that these 144,000 are going to be proclaiming the second coming of our Lord and also warn the people of not taking the mark of the beast and, uh, you know, lead them to salvation. And, and of course, uh, we know that the Lord will come at the end of the tribulation, but... But many will not know that. Each of these Jews will point the way, these 144,000. Um, you know, let's take a look at some of the end results of their ministry on earth. In Revelation 7, 9 through 10, says, After this I looked, 
And there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb, and they were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. Now, if you remember back in Jesus' day, Jesus chose 12 men to preach to the house of Israel. And if you'll notice that during the tribulation that the Lord is going to choose 12,000 from the 12 tribes of Israel to do the same thing once again. Uh, you know, friends, it's like this. If you miss the rapture, it is not too late to come to know the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Now, during the tribulation, it will be extremely difficult, but God will grant you everlasting life. There are going to be some that will make it through the tribulation. But I advise you, if you're watching this before the tribulation or before the rapture, it's better to get saved now. Don't yeah. wait on purpose. There's going to be some that make it through the tribulation and go into the millennial reign of Christ. And, and during that thousand year millennial, millennial reign of Christ, humans will, it says, live to be as old as trees in that day. If someone dies at 100 years old, it'll seem that, that they were cursed, you know. But uh, now, if you miss the rapture and, and you don't take the mark of the beast, there's a high chance that many are going to be beheaded. And I'm sure that's not the only way uh, the tribulation saints are going to die. But there's going to be many that make it through, many that won't. Amen. Uh, but you'll see them standing... Uh, Revelation 7, 9 through 10. Uh, you know, there's a great multitude. No one could count. Amen. They were wearing white robes and holding palm branches and and uh, just crying and just praising God. Amen. But I've said all that to say this. When the middle of the tribulation occurs, the Antichrist will be able to kill these two witnesses for three and a half days, their bodies will lie out in public. People will be extremely overjoyed. But at the end of the three and a half days, God will raise them up and bring them to heaven. And let's look at Revelation 11, 7 through 12. It says, Now when they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up from the abyss will attack them and over." power and kill them. This is talking about the two witnesses. Their bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which is figuratively called Sodom and Egypt, which where also our, uh, their Lord was crucified. For three and a half days, men from every people, tribe, language, and nation will gaze on their bodies and refuse them burial. The inhabitants of the earth will gloat over them and will celebrate by sending each other gifts because these two prophets had tormented those who live on the earth. But after the three and a half days, a breath of life from God entered them, and they stood on their feet, and terror struck those who saw them. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. Remember Revelation 4.1? <laughs> Remember Revelation? It says, Come up here in Revelation 4.1 or come up hither in some translations. Amen. It says, come up here, and they went up to heaven in a cloud while their enemies looked on. Now some Christians who believe in the mid-tribulation rapture feel that this is when the rapture of the church occurs. This is actually where the two witnesses who have done the Lord's bidding during the tribulation, that's, that's, that's when they go up. That's when they go. It says, come up here. Um, you know, so... And I will talk about the post-tribulation rapture here soon. But if we go back to Matthew chapter 24, we will start in verse 9. You know, I believe verse 9 picks up just right after the rapture. My reason being, remember verse 8 said um, it'd be beginning of, of, uh, of uh, pains, uh, birthing pains and all that stuff. Uh, now remember the church was still a mystery in Matthew 24, uh, the catching away or anything like that hadn't even been thought of been talking about, much less the church or anything like that. So 
At that point, the church was still a mystery when Jesus was explaining all this to his disciples. Uh, now, remember, the church was born in Acts chapter 2. But in Ver or Matthew 24, 9 through 14, it says, Then, now this is after verse 8, it says, Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. Now, in verse 9 it says, Then, you might, well, when is the then? Well, I believe... Verse 9 follows right after the rapture. Starting in verse 9, uh, I believe Jesus is beginning to talk about the tribulation period, and, and there's no mention of, the, of, of any catching away or anything because the church was still a mystery. So anyway, uh, the Lord speaks of many that will turn away from the faith and betray and hate one another. You, you're finding that intensifying and, and getting more rapid even now. Uh, you know, many false prophets will arise, increasing wickedness and the love of many growing cold. But it says in verse 13, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. Matthew 24, 15 says, So when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation spoken of through the prophet Daniel, uh, you know, let the reader understand, uh, now notice in verse 15, this is where the Antichrist literally is in the holy place and proclaims himself God. Let's just look at it from Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. It says, And he shall enter into a strong, this is from the Amplified Bible, it says, And he shall enter into a strong and firm covenant with many for one week, seven years, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and offering to cease, for the remaining three and one half years, and upon the wing or pinnacle of abominations shall come one who makes desolate until the full determined end is poured out on the desolator. Now by this time, the Jewish temple will have been rebuilt. Uh, I believe the temple will be rebuilt after the rapture. Yeah. There's so much more I could share with you right now, and just for time's sake, I, I just, we can't get into it, but, uh, you know, talking about stuff that in particular. But the Jewish people <coughs> will once again be allowed to offer sacrifices. Also, the Antichrist will make a treaty with the Jewish people for seven years, but right in the middle of that treaty is when the Antichrist ceases all sacrifices and declares everyone to worship him. Whew. You know, this is after the church. I, I just, I just added this note. Have any of you ever stopped to consider that just before the church was born, that Satan himself literally entered a man by the name of Judas to betray Jesus? Judas became literally Satan possessed. That was at before the church began. Yeah, he wasn't demon-possessed, he was Satan-possessed. Here, let's look at it. Luke 22, 3 through 4, it says, Then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, one of the twelve. And Judas went to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard and discussed with them how he might betray Jesus. Now here we find that after the church age has ended, a man here known as the Antichrist will literally be Satan-possessed. Satan will literally possess a man again. But it's like this. If you have, if you're watching this video, if it hadn't been taken off the internet, if you're watching this video and you have been left behind and the rapture has happened, when this event occurs, do not believe this man. You need to run. In Matthew 24, 16 through 29, what does Jesus say when this happens? 
He says, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Susie, can you say flee to the mountains? Flee to the mountains. We're going to talk about that in just a second. Let no, and verse 17 says, Let no one on the roof of, of his house go down to take anything out of the house. Let no one in the field go back to get his cloak. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath. See, he's talking to the Jewish people. The church isn't in the tribulation. They're tribulation saints, but he, he's talking to... Uh, 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 the time of Jacob's trouble is back to J Jewish time. We're back on Jewish time then. And verse 21 says, For then there will be great distress unequal from the beginning of the world until now, and never equaled again. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. Many people say, well, the elect is the church. Well, the elect's... Uh, called the church in some parts of the Bible, but the Jewish people are also called God's elect. So he's talking to the Jewish people here. These are his, the, his elect. And what Pastor Steve keeps talking about the um, 70th uh, year. 70th week of, the week, of Daniel. Uh, is that um, in Daniel or, or during Babylon, weren't they only there 69 years? It was 70. They, they had to... Uh, it's the seventieth week of Daniel's the tribulation. They've fulfilled sixty nine weeks of Daniel. Right, and and so then came, but then this is the church age, and then whenever um, the church age is over, then Jewish time picks back up, and so now we're in the seventieth week of Daniel. Right. Okay. The first sixty nine weeks of Daniel's weeks were Jewish years jewish times the 70th week is also going to be jewish time it reverts it's now no longer the church age it it goes back to jewish time remember who was in power back in jesus day the romans were we've heard of the revised roman empire you know all this is going to just come into place you know it's going to be jewish time he's referring to the jews here and uh anyway in verse 23, it says, At that time, if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive even the elect, if that were possible. See, I have told you ahead of time. So if anyone tells you, There he is, out in the desert, do not go out, or here he is in the inner, inner rooms, do not believe it. For as lightning that comes from the east is visible... Even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever there is a carcass, the vultures will gather. Immediately after the di distress of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Now I want to <clears throat> concentrate on verse 16 here for a minute. And, and I'm referring to uh, from Matthew 24. It, it, it says to flee. Remember I had Susie say flee to the mountains. If you're asking where, well, it's flee to the mountains. Uh, if you've been left behind, well this is what I'd do if I got left behind. I'd flee to the mountains. Now, now I'll tell you, uh, uh, these mountain ranges are spoken of in the book of Daniel. And I'm going to read them to you right now. I'm going to tell you exactly where these mountain ranges are. In Daniel 11, 40 through 41, it says, At the time of the end, the king of the south will engage him in battle, and the king of the north will storm out against him with chariots and cavalry and a great fleet of ships. He will invade many countries and sweep through them like a flood. And verse 41 says, He will also invade the beautiful land. Many countries will fall, but Edom, Moab, and the leaders of Ammon will be delivered from his hand. You know, the word says God's people perish for lack of knowledge. Amen. For the ones that knows the word of God, they will know to flee to the mountains. And these locations, according to the book of Daniel, uh, 
Well, first of all, I just want to say it's amazing how God will supernaturally protect uh, people that know during this time. Uh, but you you might be asking, where is Eden, Moab, and Ammon today? What What's the modern place? Well, these mountain ranges are in modern-day Jordan. Modern-day Jordan. How many have you ever heard of Petra? You know, it's been said that God will supernaturally take care of his people there. Petra means rock in Greek. It is a town literally carved out of sandstone desert cliffs, and it is located about three hours south of Amman, the capital of Jordan. Now, I don't know how many different places in these along these mountain ranges that that will uh, God will supernaturally take care of these people, but I know Petra will be one of them, okay? In fact, let's look, let's look at Revelation 12, 1 through 9. It says, A great and wondrous sign appeared in the heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of twelve stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on his head. His tail swept the third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that he might devour her child the moment it was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. Now I want you to listen. Verse 6, it says, The woman, now who gave birth to the Savior is Israel, okay? So the woman fled into the desert to, to a place prepared for her by God where she might be taken care of for 1260 days. These are the mountain ranges we were talking about. And then verse 7 says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Now, like I said in verse 6, God has a place prepared for his people to be supernaturally protected. Uh, you know, just as God supernaturally protected Noah and his family, God is going to do the same thing during the great tribulation for those who know God's word. Amen. I don't know. I, I've Googled Petra, and, and there's, through the years, there's been different ministries just drop mega, mega, mega amounts of Bibles there. There's there's Bibles everywhere there at Petra, and I don't know where where else, but the, the, they will ha they will have knowledge when, when, when they're there, and, and no doubt somebody's going to know the word of God. And But anyway, okay. So we talked about the mountain ranges. Let's go to Matthew 24, verses 23 through 31. Okay, it says, At that time, if anyone says to you, Look, here is a Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive even the elect, if that were possible. See, I have a told you. I have told you ahead of time. I'm repeating some of this from from a while ago, but I'm going to add to it. So, if anyone tells you there he is, out in the desert, do not go out. Or here he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever there is a carcass, the vultures will gather. Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky and all the nations of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. Okay, now I want you to listen to this. Verse 31 says, And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather 
is elect from the four winds from one end of the heavens to the other. First Thessalonians we talked about catching away. Matthew 24 when Jesus comes back he's going to gather. Two different Greek words here. I want to take another uh, look at Matthew 24 and verse 23 where it says look here is Christ or there he is do not believe it. For one thing uh, the people on these mountain ranges are being supernaturally protected. These false prophets are trying to trick God's people into coming down. You might ask why. For one thing, so they can be killed. Uh, notice that the scriptures do not say that these false prophets go up and drag these people down. You might ask why. Simply because they can't. Uh, that's why they are lying to them. They're trying to trick them. Trying to entice them. That's why they are performing lying si signs and wonders. It's like this. If you have been left behind, stay protected. Do not believe such reports. Remember, at the Lord's second coming, every eye shall see. Every eye shall see. When you're on these mountains, if, if you're watching and... and somehow wind up on one of these mountain ranges and somebody's trying to say, hey, there's Jesus, there he is, he's over here, he's over there. Look, your eyes are going to see when Jesus' second coming happens, okay? And not only that, the angels are going to come collect the folk during that event. So, uh, so in verse 31, that it says the Lord is going to send his angels to gather his elect once the Lord returns to earth. And, uh, um, if you want to know what order he's going to gather the people, it's going to be called the judgment of the nation. Uh, Matthew 13, I can't, I think starting verse 24, uh, talks about the wheat and the tares. They're going to gather the tares first and put them on Jesus' left side. Then they're going to gather the wheat, which are the sheep, and put them on Jesus' right side. So anyway, let's read Matthew 25. It says, in verse 31 it says, When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His throne in heavenly glory. The rapture, we meet the Lord in the air. He comes back to earth. Here, he, It's two different events, folks. In verse 32 says, All the nations, all the nations, all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. And it goes on to say he was hungry and they fed him and, and for time's sake I'm not going to read all that. Um, thank you Lord and then in verse uh, 41 it says then he will say to those on his left depart from me you who are cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels that's for those of you that believe God doesn't send people to hell he says for I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat and I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink and, and I'm, for the second time I'm not going to read all of that but what this is, this is the judgment of the nations. This is after Jesus' second coming, coming and he has come down to earth. Uh, for those that know the Lord by name, they will be put on his right side, and those that do not know the Lord will be put on his left side. But I believe this is where some people get the idea for a post-tribulation rapture or no rapture at all. But for those of us who do believe that there is a rapture and that it will occur before the tribulation, I want us to look at what it says in Revelation uh, chapter 19 uh, in, in uh, uh, verse 11. It says, I saw heaven standing open and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True with justice. He judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. 
The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen and white and clean. This is us, the bride of Christ. Out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury, the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has his name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I don't know about you, but Susie and I are going to be on white horses right behind the Lord. Amen. Uh, You know, Jesus is coming, and he's coming soon. Uh, I just, God wants us to be like the faithful servant found in Matthew 24. In verse 42, it says, Therefore keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. Verse 44, so you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them their food at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. I tell you the truth, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. Folks, it's like this. We need to either get right or get left. Uh, I want to be ready when the Lord Jesus comes for his church. Amen? Amen. Uh, If you're listening to me and the church is still here or you're listening to us and the church has gone up in the rapture, you can still become born again today but before I have my wife come pray I I just want to add a few closing comments you know I believe there's coming a day when there will be a drought of God's word such as the world has never known and for most of you you may or may not know but the internet was handed over on October 1st 2016 and uh, there's been many that have proposed that the internet and the ICANN the ICANN is the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. We have a little website, and once a year, ICANN, you know, I had to verify our contact information. It's, you know, cool. But anyway, many are wanting this whole, this Internet and everything be turned over to the United Nations. And... Uh, for one thing, I guess to make it easier for them to censor the Internet globally... Uh, I believe these entities will begin to pick and choose what is available over the Internet. Now, this is my personal opinion, okay? I believe that the preaching and teaching of God's Word will be among the first to be taken down from the Internet, more than likely after the rapture. Uh, For those who are left behind, many will seek after God's Word for direction in their lives, but won't find it, referring to the Word you find on the Internet. Then how many will wish that they could once again listen to those crazy preachers? I believe if I were left behind that I would begin downloading many of my favorite Bible teaching series that I could find uh, on to my laptop if it was me. Because I believe there's coming a day where you won't be able to find it. And I just want to close with two great scriptures from the book of Amos. I just want to back up what I'm about the drought of God's word. It says, Amos in chapter 8, verses 11 and 12. It says, The days are coming, declares the sovereign Lord, when I will send a famine through the land. Not a famine of food or thirst for water, but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. Men will stagger from sea to sea and wander from north to east, searching for the word of the Lord, but they will not find it. Everybody, I hope that you've been blessed by the Word of God. Uh, we, we don't want to let a Bible study go by without giving anybody here a chance to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If this video is still on the Internet and the rapture has come, you can be saved. Amen. It won't be easy. You may have to give your life. You may make it through. I don't know, but... Today's the day of your salvation, and I, I just want my wife to uh, 
And I'd like all pray. of you that are listening live today, I'd like to encourage you that, like Pastor Steve said, today is the day of salvation. So whether you're watching it live or, or re-listening to the broadcast, today is the day of salvation. This is the accepted time. So let's pray and ask Jesus in our heart. You know, Jesus was the only begotten Son of God. He was 100% God, 100% man. He came to this earth and lived a completely <clears throat> sinless life. And he took upon the sins of you and, and me. He took on our sins and he paid the penalty for that sin. Uh, there's a scripture in Psalms, I can't remember if it's 89 or where it is, but uh, where God says that his chosen and his anointed one, uh, if he doesn't repent, he would suffer. Um, he would suffer flogging and lashes. Well, Jesus didn't deserve to die, but he took on that penalty for us. Because, you know, because we were sinners, and so we deserved to be flogged. We deserved to be beaten. We deserved to die and go to hell. But Jesus took on that penalty for us. He was our substitute. And he loves you so much. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him would not perish or wouldn't go to hell, but have everlasting life. And so on the third day, though, God raised Jesus again from the dead. And he's alive now. He's not a dead God on a cross anymore. Amen. He's alive. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. And you... If you ask him to, he will come and live in your heart and he will forgive you your sins. I don't care how bad they were, he'll wipe it out. He'll wipe it clean and you'll have a new beginning. So let's pray this prayer. Father in heaven. Father in heaven. Thank you for giving your son Jesus. Thank you for giving your son Jesus. To take on my punishment on the cross. To take on my punishment on the cross. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. Jesus, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. And, and be Lord over my life. And be Lord over my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. You pray that prayer in faith, believing you are a child of God. Get into the Word before there becomes a shortage of the Word of God. Amen. Let's not wait till there's a drought of the Word of God. Let's get in there now. We have this Bible. We have Bibles all over the place, at least in the United States we do. Amen. And, uh, and, and we can even get them on our cell phone. I have my Bible on my cell phone. Steve has it on his. Amen. We've got it on the Internet. Amen. And we have it in these paper books, you know. This is God's holy Word. It's... You learn about Him. You learn how to live. This is a manual for life. This is how to get to know God and Amen. how to live for Jesus. And so join us again for a word in due season next time. God bless you and thank you so much for watching. And Maranatha.